Okay, so I've been shooting weddings for uh, a fair few years now. Uh, I can't remember off the top of my head how many I've shot, lots and lots. Um, so I thought I'd do a quick video of a few tips I can think of. Um, how many planned for this? So there's probably a load more. So if you have more, then please leave them in the comments. I might make a follow-up video. Um, so just a few tips off the top of my head. Um, firstly, get there early um, to the location. Um, scout for individual locations for portraits things like that um, assess any problems you may have um, if you're using multiple cameras actually firstly use multiple cameras take have at least two cameras with you um, because equipment breaks and you know it fails so you should be ready for that you should be able to just go right I'm going to deal with that later drop your camera pick up another one because um, the wedding day can't stop you know you need two cameras you need a backup you can you can borrow equipment from somewhere you can hire it if you don't have it um, I mean you can pick up a 5D Mark 1 uh, for two to three hundred pounds now um, you can pick up uh, things like an old 20D and stuff for about 50 quid if you look online it's just have something, have something to shoot on because non-ideal camera shots are better than having no shots. And at the end of the day, if you're good enough, then you should be able to make it work. Um, right, so with your cameras, uh, take, either sync up your times just before you, you shoot or alternatively, and this is what I do, Take a photograph of something, something random, like I took a photograph of my shoes. Um, I work with an assistant. We have two cameras each, so we've got four cameras. We take a photograph of our shoes exactly the same time. You know, we have three, two, one, click. So we we know then that those shots were all taken at exactly the same moment. So then in Lightroom, we can sync all our photos to be in perfect chronological order because when you have different angles going on um, especially for things where you're using like a, a burst rate maybe you've got a confetti shot or something people coming out of the church you, you might cut between one thing and the other and sometimes if they're slightly out of sync it looks it looks really odd so that's that's a really really important thing to remember to do um, always take sort of food and drink with you um just to take a bottle of water take a bag of crisps a bag of sweets something just in your bag just for when you have those energy lulls because it, it is intensive shooting a wedding you are on your feet for um 8 10 12 hours you are carrying equipment around you're running around you it is physically intensive and sometimes you just have that energy drop and you just need to eat something you might you need to sort out your how when you're going to eat as well um if the couple provide you with food and they do sometimes um be wary of this because what the people in the kitchen normally do is they prioritize the wedding guests so they'll bring out all the food for the wedding guests and then they will feed the staff and they'll see you as a photographer as staff so you will get your food as everyone's sort of finishing and that is normally when the speeches start so i've had situations where i've literally sat down to eat and the speeches have started and i've had to get up and leave my food and go and shoot the speeches and it, you know didn't really get any dinner um so if you do get that you need to arrange with the kitchen um to have your food at the same time because you need to be available when when they are uh, when they are not eating basically so don't uh, that's another tip don't take photographs of people eating um, yeah just don't do it uh, people don't look good when they're eating uh, this is this is your time to have a break um, go for a wander um, if you I, I just like to take food with me because I know I've got control I can all just go off somewhere sit quietly back up my shots maybe if I bring my laptop um, change my cards Maybe change my batteries if I need to. I've never really needed to do that, but um, that's another tip. Make sure you've got lots of batteries that are charged. Charge them beforehand. Make sure you've got lots of 
SD, CF cards, whatever you use, and make sure they're formatted and ready to go. Um, because you will find you will just run out halfway through, you need to just take it out and put in another one, and if your holiday shots come up, then you have to go through and delete them, then you, you're going to miss something. Um, meet the couple beforehand. This is quite important. Um, this is more for you than for them. Um, you frame it like you're going to go through an itinerary, and you don't really, they probably won't really be ready at the point you meet them. I would suggest maybe about four weeks before, three or four weeks before, because it's kind of near enough when it's on their minds and they, they kind of know what's going to happen. All the venues will have been booked and everything by that point, but they won't be in that last mad panic that you get into in the last kind of few days where you're trying to get everything together. Um, so this is a good time to meet them. What you do this for is to assess their personalities and so that when you turn up on the day you're not strangers. Assessing personalities is good because you then can have some idea of their kind of sense of humour, what kind of might relax them, so you can kind of gauge a little bit, you can be prepared for when you need to take portraits or um, you might have some topics to talk about. So when you take, this comes on to another point, taking portraits, always do group portraits, arrange your times to do group portraits, get a detailed itinerary of the day and um, put a time in for portraits, get a list of portraits they want from them. A lot of the time people will tell you, oh, we don't really want to do group shots. No couple wants to do group shots, really. Um, the group shots are not for the couple, they're for the aunt, they're for the, the, the great granddad, they're for, you know, the college friends, they're, you know, because the bride and groom don't want a shot of themselves with different groups of people, it's those people who want the shot of themselves with the bride and groom. And if you don't organise it, people will ask you to do it on the day and you won't be prepared for it. People go, oh, can I just get a photograph with them? And then they'll, then other people will see and then they'll come over and be like, oh, after you've done that, can we, can we have a group, can we have a shot together? And you won't have thought about the location, you won't have thought about time, you won't have thought about how the lighting is, all this sort of stuff. And you'll end up with a subset uh, of kind of poor quality photos that, you know have caused you to miss out on something else. You can shoot weddings on your own, but if you shoot with an assistant, it's a lot easier, or a second shooter. There's times when you need to maybe be setting up the camera, setting up lighting, so someone needs to talk to guests, get them arranged in a group, that sort of thing. Very, very helpful. Uh, it's nice to have someone who can go with one of the couple and someone would go with another one um, in the mornings. Uh, that's quite nice to have sort of a two stories that kind of come together. That's a nice thing you can do. Because <clears throat> um, you, you lose people's attention while you're setting up equipment. So it's good to have someone to talk to them. Um, coming back to the portraits, when you take photos of people, if they aren't relaxed, what you can do, rather than hiding behind a camera, because that's not very welcoming, just lean around and talk to them. Um, so you set up your camera, then you chat about them, chat about something they they like, you know, maybe when you met them they had a small dog, talk about the dog, you know, um, make a few jokes, uh, try and, you know, try and get them talking, maybe talk about when they first met, something like that, um, something that will loosen them up and you're just kind of shooting, occasionally go back, you know, just to check you haven't drifted off and you're shooting a bush or something. but. You know, you can do that. If you've got live view in your camera, you can use live view. You can kind of uh, keep an eye just on your on your uh, framing and you can be shooting, chatting to them. It's a nice thing to do. When you're taking individual portraits of them, uh, I, I mean, as a couple, um, take them away for a bit, take them away, arrange time for this. Um, look for good backgrounds. Look for plain backgrounds, something maybe straight on is quite a contemporary thing to do on maybe like a big wall that's maybe maybe in front of a you know a big red wall or a big green 
hedge or something just sort of straight on. Um, you want to keep the background generally fairly plain. Uh, it's nice to do a mixture of sort of close, more close up shots. And sometimes you can do nice shots where maybe they're quite small in the frame. Maybe they only, they only come up to about a third of it and you've got a lot of sky in it or something. That's, that's quite a nice, a nice thing to do. There's, there's a lot of, uh, a lot of options there, but try and keep your backgrounds non busy. Um, because the focus is on the couple and y you want to really get that in your shot. Um, if it's a sunny day, try and shoot into the sun. Um, shoot people into the sun, use the expose for the people. So then you get the bounce of whatever's behind you onto them and the sun acts as a, a sort of rim light to light the edge of the hair, things like that. Um, it looks better than having people squinting into the sun with panda eyes because of the shadows things like that um but you know people obviously like the sun and in the summer when most weddings are uh people like to be outside and so you will probably have to deal with that a lot you can't always take a diffuser with you everywhere um so yeah shoot into the sun is a good way to do it or get people into the shade if you want to take uh, more controlled portraits don't skimp on your memory cards don't buy cheap ones uh just don't. If you've invested all this money in your equipment and people have invested so much money in their day, this this key thing that is holding the photos, get a good quality one, get a SanDisk one. There's some other brands that are good. Kingston are all right. Um, Transcend are pretty good, I hear. Um, for weddings, those sort of things are fine. Um, I think SanDisk are generally considered the best, but they are better in a lot of other conditions so maybe if you know you were going on a trek up a mountain uh, and you're going to be in sort of freezing cold conditions you might want to take a sand disc but um, I find that like a transcend one will work fine um, seem to have good reviews you know get, get a reputable brand don't just pick up one that you may, you may think is a good deal because it's got a high capacity or something um, better to keep more of them in low capacity and change them than to have one like high capacity one that might break because then you've lost everything. Uh, turn off all the sounds on your camera, uh, like turn off all the beeps and stuff, shoot as quietly as possible. Uh, you kind of learn to sort of be invisible. People start, to, people get used to you after, you know, a little while. There's always a few people who are constantly conscious of the camera and I, I kind of make it a mission to try and get shots of them looking natural. Another thing to do when you meet the uh, couple is to is to find out who the important people are and make sure you get a lot of shots of them and you don't end up having a great collection of someone's, some work colleagues plus one who people have never met before. Because um, I've done that in the past. We've... Uh, we found we've had like a really interesting looking guy or something. We've got lots of photos of him, but you know, find out the couple actually don't know who he is. They've never met him before. So, you know, not, not that good for them. Uh, try and get a range of shots. So get sort of establishing shots of the venue, get shots of wide shots of the rooms, get lots of shots of people interacting get a few posed shots, get lots of shots of details because people put a lot of effort into the day and they want, those are the things they want to really um, remember. Initially, I think they'll think they want to remember those. I think ultimately they want to remember the interactions they had with their friends and things like that. Um, shoot in the downtime between portraits. So if you do an official portrait, everyone sort of stood there, um, if you keep them waiting for too long, after you know, after you've taken the portrait, everyone will kind of relax and have a bit of a laugh. Shoot again, keep shooting, because some of the best shots I've got, well, f for me, I think so, are when people sort of they fall about laughing or someone's some kid's done something or you know, and everyone's kind of reacting, and you get that almost like 
David LaChapelle style shot with where there's all this stuff's going on in the in the frame it makes a really makes a really nice photo because you've also set it up you've also set it up with the right lighting and the background and everything so when you do get that natural interaction in this setup environment it, it's, there's something quite special about those shots um, use flash uh, I know people are a bit scared of flash but learn how to bounce it um, don't you don't need to use it all day. You don't need to use fill flash if you if you use the light well. Um, but don't shoot in the dark and just bump up your ISO when you could use flash. Um, flash can look natural. It can look like natural light if you do it well. Um, you know, swivel the head round to the side, um, bounce it off a wall. Um, you know, even just firing up to the ceiling is not not the best thing but sometimes it's just look for the walls that you can bounce off um i find the enemy of flash bouncing at weddings are dark walls big rooms mirrors mirrors are bad um sometimes in the big sort of stately home hall ballrooms they have kind of mirrors all the way down and then you get like these big squares of light kind of coming onto people um uh, but you can do a lot of things with flash. You can um, you can do some nice uh, dancing shots where if you use a slow sync, if you don't know what that is, that is um, where you use a flash but you have the shutter open for a reasonably long time. Um, I say reasonably long, a, a second, you know, half a second, something like that. Um, what happens then is you get a lot of kind of colour and stuff from the lights when people are dancing, streams of light kind of going across, but you get nice frozen sharp action from the flash in the immediate foreground. And it gives quite a, an atmospheric feel. It gives a lot of energy to the shot. Um, that's a nice, a nice thing to do. Um, the last thing I would say is that to remember that nothing ever runs to schedule. A wedding you just got to roll with it um, allow time for that allow yourself a few extra hours to stay if they say you know we're gonna um, we're gonna have a barbecue at uh, six o'clock and then we're gonna cut the cake at seven then we're gonna dance and you can go at eight expect that to be more like 10 p.m. Because everything always takes longer, things happen. Um, allow a lot of time for your group shots as well, actually, because sometimes people you can't find everyone. Uh, you know, someone's gone to the bar, someone's gone to the toilet, um, and try get the kids in last because kids don't like to wait around. Get everyone else in, then get the kids in. Don't get the kids in, then try and find Uncle Pete who's gone to the bar and is buying. Five pints. I can hear my daughter waking up, so I better go. Okay, I uh, hope that's helpful. Um, sorry, it's so sort of ad-libbed and quick. Uh, bit of experience there from me. Okay, bye.